change our stock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So should I start now? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so I'll just introduce myself. So I'm I'm, I'm Jing Ping. So I'm a research fellow in robotic surgery. So now I'm, I'm currently working in ITTC Center for a uh, Joint Biomechanics. And uh, so uh, uh, today, so so we will talk about soft robotics. And so uh, so like normally, what's in your mind if you uh, think about uh, soft robotics? And I, I would imagine you might think of the Baymax, the big hero movie, the healthcare robot that, you know, huggable and it's soft and intelligent and also very, um, so it has this soft, soft figure that make people think it's approachable. So it's more friendly. And uh, so I, I can't remember how many people come to me and say, Jing, can you make a, a soft robotic? Like, like make Baymax. And I have to admit it, that's a great movie. So that's how make people to believe in soft robotics. So, so, so today we'll talk about the soft robotics in real life. And so we'll, we'll be um, about soft robotic applications and uh, about research and also how to make soft robots. And like, um, so this one is a, a Festo a Eco Penguin and this one has a, a flexible material. So it has a, 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 a strong, so that is um, so have a like a to 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 be able to have the flexible material to you know to have these this shape you have to have a structure to hold it and inside they put like solar so like sensors they put like uh, the actuators inside and the whole uh, design is um, so it's mimicking the the real uh, penguin and yeah and and it's a uh, very energy saving and about uh, this one is a festo um festo smart bird so in, in this one this it's really light this one is uh, around 400 gram 400 gram and with the uh, the energy consuming is like 20 25 watts and the energy from its uh, gliding flying it's all coming from the flipping of the wings so it's all coming from the wings. It's no other, it's not like a propeller, not like the airplane or anything, it's only the wings. And, um, and so this one, you, you can see, it's like really like a, like a real bird. And the, the, yeah, the wingspan is uh, around two meters, really lightweight. I mean, 400 grams, two meter wingspan. And, and uh, so this is about, so nowadays we have a, like a small, you know, startup companies doing soft robotics. This company, soft robotics, uh, it's uh, doing the egg picking. So the force control is really uh, delicate because uh, it's very fragile. And this company, uh, their investor include ABB, Vanuk. So, you know, so people are really paying attention to this company. And this one is uh, a company in Belgium. It's, it's because they, they have so many strawberry farm and that like picking those fruits that is very soft, you know, like we pick and very delicately if you squeeze it and then yeah, be out of shape. So this is soft robotic and this one is for a flower arrangement. So this company is, uh, you know, just so, so like this one is like more efficient like than the human being. And, you know, you can work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, so yeah. And, and so this one is um, from, you can see the, the hand, this is a Molly. So the UK company do a robotic kitchen. So now they are launching, this set is now is over 300, 300K US dollars. And so, so this company collaborated with this shadow hand. So this hand is manufactured by the shadow hand company. And, and you can see it has, like 20 degrees of freedom in the hand and it's uh, 20 pairs. So here has a 20 pairs of uh, uh, pneumatic muscle. So if you control, you use pneumatic control, it can you know, just rotate, yeah. And so, so this is also a very uh, precise control for force control. So I think soft robotics is really good for force control and very lightweight mobility. So this is like two advantages because it can be really lightweight. Uh, you know, our robotic arm usually is pretty heavy. So nowadays, yeah. 
And uh, so this one is a festal one. So this one is a bio, bionic cobalt is a, so they use pneumatic uh, rot rotation drive, this one. And the, what we want to talk about is this hand. It has a bellow, bellow here, or bellow shape. It can uh, be like actuator, it's like finger, human finger. And it's controlled by here is a microchip. This is just control the valve, all the valves here. And uh, here has a tactic sensor in the finger. So it's a tactic sensor. And also, and this PC, PCB here. So these are uh, act as a tactile. So it has full sen inertial sensor, full sensor integrated into, the, into that. So, and they are doing some artificial intelligence like parallel learning to, to make it more intelligent. So this bio soft hand. And then also recently the Meta, so it's a haptic glove, was a newly released uh, by Meta, the company, and it was Facebook. So they, they do this like virtual reality, reality and these two people, if you play and if you shake hands, you will have haptic feedback, which is more interesting now. And if you play pool and you will have, so you can feel it. Yeah, so this is good. And, and you can see this structure and it's controlled and it, it can provide like nominal uh, pressure. So you can feel the, the force here. And also this, this bit, it has a lateral, lateral force. So you can feel like lifting something, you can have a little bit of feeling as well. And oh, so, uh, so about uh, research, should we talk about some uh, soft robotic research? So firstly, we say, what is soft? We have a definition. And so this, um, we are not talking about Morse hardness, you know, the, those minerals to use one mineral to, to scratch another one. That is not the softness, hardness that we are talking about. We're not talking about like using a, like a vicarious indenture, indenture metal or something, not that. This, this is purely like for like rubber, rubber kind of so softness. Softness means if you use this uh, indenture, and put it in the material and you have a gauge. So you would know like the degree. So we have like a quant uh, quantitative. So, uh, so we have a number uh, for, these, for this hardness. I uh, like the uh, gummy bear is like super soft. It's very soft. And like um, the shoes, you know, wheels, they are a bit harder. So in this realm, so we talk about soft robotics. We're talking about some, something around here in this region. And so, and, and about this research, uh, it's interesting is that, um, so this, this uh, one mimics the finger. So it, it's like a piano. So it's very easy to see. So here is the material. It can be paper, can be, so, so different material, but it's not as stretchable as these material. So if it's a, this is Ecoflex, then, um, so th this one can be a, a material that is like a rubber, that is a stiffer not so easy to stretch. So, so when, when this air uh, in flow into the, these uh, empty space, then this thing will have this fixture. So it will bend because this side, you don't have much um, you know, deformation and this side, it can uh, yeah, so inflate a lot. So it can play piano. So it has force control as well. Mm. So this is a, a Harvard from the Harvard uh, research research group and this group is a and um, it's also american uh, group so they do is uh, they mimic the caterpillar the caterpillar you know the row and they they jump so that's how how they how they move and it's very energy efficient because it's very lightweight and in this the speed can be really high they can that the caterpillar can re move really quickly in this way and so so they just use SMA coil uh, here, uh, SMA coil inside. So what they do is, it's memory shape, memory shape alloy that they, they use a cord so to control it, to control its, um, its shape. So it will, it will have this. And the interesting about this research is they do they use Vicom system. So we know Vicom system. So they, they use it and they do uh, kinematics and a dynamic study. So they not only mimic the, the behavior, but they, they also do the kinematics and dynamics behavior to, to mimic this, um, this caterpillar movement. 
And this one is even more interesting. So I picked this one uh, to share with you is because it's ha it has, um, so this is histological uh, uh, image. And this one is, is sol solographic image of the, of the real octopus. So they not only try to mimic the movement, the, the force, the kinematics, but also they want to mimic the inside, the real texture of it. So what they do, they use this like mesh like, so this is like the longitudinal, uh, this muscle and, and for these, they have like nerve, so the control, the nerve system. And also the, uh, they also have like a, a spring. So they make a little uh, a combo inside with uh, springs to, to mimic the uh, transverse muscles. So, and, and the oblique muscles as well, and here. So they got all the fixture inside the, the same way as it, so they have really, so, I mean, this is a, a step. The, this research is like, they, they are not only using the force or kinematics or, you know, the, the movement, but also the texture. So they're really making this, this creature, this octopus-like, yeah. Robot. Oh, and and so now we move on to how, how to make this. And this one is um. So you see the this bit. If it, it's like this, uh, this two material cannot be too much the hardness. So you can't attach. So the inside material is harder, and the outside material is is a uh, more stretchable. Is you know is more stretchable and softer. And but the it cannot um. Dif differentiate too much because you still need to uh, bind together. So if you, you can use a pair like Ecoflex 30 and the PDMS, or can use a elastosol and, and paper. So this is harder, a uh, harder bit. And to make this one, you just, um, you, you need to 3D print your, your mode. You can 3D print the mode and just uh, uh, sometimes you have to put in mode inside as well. So there's a mode, so sort of uh, outside shell and inside you have for these channels. And then you need to, uh, just when you design the 3D mode, you need to leave the space to, to, you know, to take it out, take the inside bit out. And as long as this one is uh, like baked, so you put, so if you 3D print it, design a 3D printed remote and then you use liquid, you put liquid in and it, you, you, it will allow it to sit and bake. You will bake it and then it will be, become very stiff. I mean, it's still soft, but it's, yeah, in a more a better shape. And then you take it out. And then what you do is attach it to like, um, you know, like paper or PDMS or different material like paper, PDMS or cloth, or even sometimes use thread, you know, cloth. So different kind of material to reinforce it. So because like you want the, if it's purely a, like a very soft material, then you can't provide, you can't output a force in a, in a certain direction you want. You want to reinforce it using a harder material. So, so this is how, how this one come into play. And you attach this one, and then you need to do is uh, you attach like to the pneumatic circuit because you still have to control the air flowing. So you can put, so this is only a chamber and like a reinforcement structure. So this structure allow air to go in and out. You still need to design the pneumatic circuit and attach the pneumatic circuit to this uh, little chamber here. And you need to make it airtight. So that's a, like a very important step because the, Usually it's a little, a little in and out outlet, and then it has a, has a corner, and you have to be mindful that this bit may have a, a stress, you know, like a very high stress at the, uh, at the corner. So that's, yeah, happy, yeah, be careful handling that bit. And then the pneumatic circuit, and then you use like proportional vial or something to control the air flowing. So, and then that's it. So you can control it and, so, so th this, uh, this is, um, represents a type, a type, a series of soft robots. And uh, for this one, it, is, it has more, you know, like memory shape alloy. So you need like put the SMA coil inside. So leave, 
So when you uh, design the mode, design the mode for, you know, to uh, for, for design mode, you have to leave the space for the co co coil. And also you have to uh, be careful, like, because this material has to be very soft. So which means you have to uh, think beforehand. It's very hard to do anything afterwards. So, so if this one break a little bit, and then you have to redo it all over again. So because it's, uh, it's very hard to do anything about it because it's too soft. And you know you can't put a band-aid because it's so stretchable. And, so, and uh, for this uh, uh, octopus-like uh, shape uh, robot, so this is a bit I talk about. So I, I talk about these. Uh, so to mimic the transverse muscle, they use a spring. It's sort of like a, a muscle here. So I mean, like for entropy, like for like the, the rubber, it, it is quite different. For the rubber shape, you know, like rubber, uh, like a rubber band, if you, if you like stretch it, and it will be, so it will be hot, right? So the entropy, you know, because the energy, so it's more in a, in a, you know, organized in a serial, yeah, parallel kind, kind of uh, shape. And then when it contracts, so it pull down. So, and for the spring, it's a bit different. So the spring, but they, they managed to, I think it's because they had a, had a thorough look into the uh, solography and a sol 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 solographic image and that um, histological image. So they, they think like this one would be best represents the transverse muscle. And this one will be like the longitudinal, the mesh like the, yeah, the longitudinal muscle. So but I think like then they also do, uh, do some control. So which means this is like the central nerve, nervous fiber. So I think they, they mimic like every structure inside the octopus to, to make, this is a group from Italy, they did this. I mean, I can see how complicated and how hard to make, make something like this. And um, I think it, it uh, has like, you have to have a background. So like say material, material chemistry, and also have a background in like electric, and also some, you know, you need to, if you control it, you need software development. So, but they, they are able to pull up something like this. It's very, I mean, this, is, this might not be a tr very attractive to invest investors at the moment because it's too hard. The investment is gonna be huge if you, if you yeah, in this kind of thing. But it, it shows a bit more about the future. Is our hum human beings really try to look into the, so look into the, the nature and to really try to figure out how the nature make everything like so energy, you, you know, so energy efficient and also really lightweight. So, you know, octopus, they are so clever when, when we look at them. So like they can, they are super smart. So they can only the big, you know, well, so like if you have a cage, then the huge octopus, even the, if you have a hole that is larger than the big, they can, you know, it can autonomously get out, which is like really smart. And so this is um, how people are trying to get to know nature and make new things. So I think um, nowadays robotics are many, companies are mainly looking to um, very specific, very specific designs because it's easy, it's less investment, but for something like this, it's, uh, it's the future. I think it's really important. And then I really want to share with you. So like some other people might be also be interested in this and might, you know, contribute in a little bit of this. It might, you know, it's a long way. It has a long way to go. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Are the, in, the chamber individually controlled? So do you have a, a small valve that um, allow you to control how much air you have in the, in different, in the different uh, chamber? Or do you just push the air uh, equally in all chamber? 
Um, so it has different chambers. So it, it depends on your design. So some design have different chambers you can control, like say if you have a hand and then you have different joints, then you have different chambers to control, to control this. But uh, like this one, maybe this bit is, uh, is one chamber. So say if it's a finger, you have like five chambers or like 10 chambers if you like do this and that, you know, like, so, so, so a, a set of chamber here, or a, yeah, so it depends on your They're individual small valve to control how much air they, they receive. Yeah, if you have like say 10 chamber, then you might need say like 10 valve, proportional valve to control it. Yeah, that's it. And are they miniaturized making very small yeah yeah they have like microfluid they have really really small ones nowadays i'm not uh, putting the here but so, so many of them like they like some some sometimes they like mimic cockroach you know insects so that's really lightweight and very they, and they have and like squid they have little chambers that also embed like pcb in it so so make it can, you know, sensors, small sensors as well. Operational lives, like operational lifetime on soft robotics, like with all of the rubber joints and things, do they wear out more quickly than rigid linked robots with bearings and solid parts? So it will wear quickly. So it's because of entropy. So it's like, like, you know, nowadays the robot, we see like ABB for Nook ones, so they are joints, rotary joints, which you know, if theoretically, it do, do not wear much. You know, and these, you know, like a rubber band, you know, you can fatigue. You know, if you, you keep stretching it, you you know, at a certain point, it will be like getting older. You see that, yeah, it's like human skin, right? It's like getting older, wrinkles. You, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, that that's true, but but it, it does not um. So you can see it as a kind of glove, as a kind of, uh, you know, you can get rid of it and put on new ones on the robot. It's just, if it's cheaper, so the soft robotic, that company, so I think they are, they are successful in making this product. So like, this is like cheap. If, if this one is really cheap, you can replace it all the time. the skill set required to work effectively in this field. So a lot of us are familiar with machine learning, computer vision, and it's basically, you must be an excellent coder. You probably have to have reasonable mathematics um, and that's about it. What is the background skill set that makes someone able to prosper in this soft robotics field? Is it mechanical engineering? Is it material science? Is it a mixture of all of those, electrical? I think for this kind of thing needs someone so needs people like with uh, like chemical chemistry and like um, and also if you can include people material science and also mechanical engineering because mechanical engineering people can put all these together and chem chemi uh, chemistry people is to for the material so like the material property is really important so they, they need to make additive you know to the to these glue and stuff and and the chemistry, yeah, to know the basics. We can say that for robotics, it's uh, drifting, drifting from a hardware problem to a software problem because <laughs> you can uh, uh, get uh, off the shelf part. So for robotic help, for example, uh, are we far from uh, the similar situation with soft robotics? So can I buy uh, some? Uh, soft finger and uh, make a pen if I want? I mean, if you say near future, real application, it, it is this way. So be it like a universal a gripper, like more universal, so you can make it really cheap, right? If it's universal, like you only have like different, different, like uh, different size and uh, just a few types and you can make it really cheap and then use uh, software. So use like machine learning to improve it. So you, you just like, it's like you buy a robot arm and buy like a pair of this gripper 
and then you do your design. So it's yeah, it's like that. Yeah. So they have commercial no. I think this one is like one of the most successful commercial model. So it's, so it's backed up by ABB and Fanuc. You can see that. So they are partner with this. It sort of act like a glove or a thing to go with the, the arm. So it's like one arm will need a, a set of this. Yeah. Great welcome missing uh, application. Uh, but what about the cost? How far we are from, for instance, you show us a smart hand, the other slide, I think. How far we are like for uh, implementing this kind of approach in uh, prosthetic external prosthetic for amputated people and stuff like that? I think we uh, You show us uh, the robot with the Matt from Meta, able to oh. filling uh, oh, yeah. object and uh, wipes. Okay. Oh, so you mean so like a real problem? How realistic, uh, how far realistic we are from uh, possible orthopedic application? I think there are already some people doing soft robotics. So for the uh, really, for really like a prosthetic research, because someone if they lose exactly. a four huh? Yeah, but from the point of the cost. Yeah, the cost is really. Yeah, do you think it's uh, possible in the future, like 10 years, 20 years? apply this kind of technology to everywhere or is yeah i think it's put the hand potential yeah the foot i have already seen companies startup companies making the you know the the leg yeah. prosthetic leg and it's you know the people can dance using the leg yeah, but i mean it's too expensive i think one uh, one prosthetics can be a thousand two thousand two hundred to three hundred uh, australian dollars maybe yeah. Yeah. you know like if it's a new new prototype, yeah. but uh, people are work, working towards this direction. I think hand is harder. Hand is like the, you know, we have like twenty seven joints here, the hand, human hand. They do like this one. They do how many? That yeah, they do twenty degrees of freedom. So they're not as as flexible as our human hand. Yeah. Planning. So, you know, when you when you have these rubber, these air grippers which deform under contact, or you have the bird flying through the air which is also deforming continuously, um, it must be much harder to characterize the dynamics of the system and then do motion planning and control. Is that the case? Is there is there much work in doing like control and motion planning and understanding the dynamics of these systems? Say like the bird. So like bird, I think it's uh, it's just the modeling is is rougher. It's not as precise as like we have a joint or you know you have a motor driven a joint so that's precisely controlled using an encoder or something but that is a, the model is more is more is rougher but it, it still you can model it because there's there's you can calculate the torsion and the air you know still looking at the uh, the lift you can still calculate it and, I mean the German they they're really good at this so yeah, like the force and you know, like they have the wind tunnel and everything to, to do the modeling. So that's why they are so successful. That's why some of them, the work that's beautiful is the Planfesto, this company. I mean, even if we do robotics here, so I do there's some uh, like pneumatic control here, I still use their product. I mean, <laughs> their product, you have to use them. It's like the best. If you don't use it, I mean, it's your loss. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those uh, small component, like this one, I think this is just for farm. Yeah. They, they do this just for farm. Yeah. Yeah. Just to maybe analyze uh, birds' behavior or, or something like that. Yeah. Because, yeah. because I think you know, also for birds and the delphin, penguins, what was the first one? Maybe they can, uh, they can study better uh, their life cycle uh, habits, why they're moving in certain direction. Now. Are learning that because this is like most efficient way you know antarctic ocean yeah yeah because you know that the everything fr freezing you know like so cold and and if you use this it's the easiest easiest way is most effective way under these circumstances you can imagine like a, a bearing in a rotary in that condition but this one is good <laughs> yeah. 
I think I, I, I appreciate this work is it's, it's uh, closer to uh, nature. So in this way, I think human beings are doing something more, so more environmentally friendly. If you look into you know, nature and how they, you will see more. I mean, you will be embraced with these animals and you will see that our planet is not, you know, you know, we imagine we live with them. We share this planet with them, with a real penguin, yeah. Thank you.